Today I'm going to show you how to knit a crossbody foam bag using the AdiExpress king size knitting machine. This is a pattern from my book Circular Knitting Machine Patterns which is available now on Amazon. You can find the link in the description below or you can find the link at dianalevinknits.com. The book features 25 of my favorite knitting machine patterns as well as a section on techniques and a section of templates for sketching out some of the projects in the book. This bag is perfect for when you want to keep your phone with you but you don't need to be carrying a full purse. It's sized to fit a phone that measures approximately 3 inches inches wide by 6 inches tall. The bag itself measures approximately 4.5 inches wide and a little over 7 inches tall. You can find tutorials for many of the patterns in the book here in my YouTube channel. I have lots more knitting machine tutorials coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest videos. In terms of timing, it took me about 15 minutes to knit the bag, 15 minutes to seam the bag, and about 15 minutes to knit and attach the I-cord handle for a total project time of approximately 45 minutes. That being said, we all go at different paces so project time will vary from person to person. If you make this project, please tag me on social media when you share your work. You can find me at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using the 46 needle Addy Express King Size Knitting Machine. Or you could also use the 48 needle Centro and your bag will just be a touch taller. I'm using Loops and Threads Impeccable Yarn, which is a weight 4 yarn. I'm using the Tulip I-Cord Knitter Machine, but you can use any I-Cord knitting machine, or you can hand knit the I-Cord with double pointed needles. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a tape measure, and if you'd like to add one, a knitting tag. Step 1 is knitting the bag. Cast onto a 46 or 48 needle circular knitting machine using scrap yarn. You'll remove the scrap yarn at the end of the project, so the color doesn't matter as long as it contrasts well with the main color yarn. Turn the knob until you reach the first needle. Wrap the yarn around the first needle and then weave it back and forth along all the needles until you reach the end of the row. When you approach the first needle again, wrap the yarn behind the needle to its right and then place the yarn into the yarn holder. Hold the yarn with your left hand to provide tension, or if you're using a centro, place the yarn into the middle tensioner. And begin knitting by turning the knob on the right. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish 5 rows, cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and throw it in the middle of the machine to the right of the first needle. Then grab your main color yarn and throw a very long yarn tail into the middle of the machine and place the yarn tail with the scrap yarn tail between the same two needles and place the yarn into the yarn holder. Hold the two yarn tails together close and low as you slowly begin to knit the next row. Pause the knitting after a few stitches to reset your counter back to zero. Knit 42 rows in the main color yarn. Knit slowly for the first few rows to make sure that all the stitches are caught and then you can pick up the speed for the remaining rows. When you finish 42 rows, stop before the first needle. Cut another long yarn tail in the main color yarn, which we'll use to seam the project later, and throw it in the middle of the machine. Grab the scrap yarn again and place it between the same two needles as the main color and into the yarn holder. Hold the two tails together close and low as you slowly begin to knit the first row of the scrap yarn cast off. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish five rows, cut the scrap yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Step two is grafting the ends together. Grafting can be intimidating at first, but it's a great skill to have because it creates a seamless join between the cast on and cast off stitches. And after some practice, it becomes a lot easier. To graft the ends together, fold up the two open sides to meet each other. Thread the yarn tail from the bottom side onto a darning needle. Begin with the first stitch on the top right side. Go down through the first stitch and then up through the stitch directly to its left. I'll show you a close up here of how I'm working through those stitches. Pull the yarn through. Then go back down to the bottom side and thread down through the first stitch on the right and then up through the stitch directly to its left. I'll show you a close up here of how I'm working those stitches. Pull the yarn through. Next, go back to the top row. This time you'll begin working through the stitch that you exited out of previously. Just like before, go down through that stitch and then up through the stitch directly to its left. I'll show you a close up of how I'm working those stitches here. Then go back to the bottom row. Just like the top side, you'll begin working through the stitch that you exited out of previously. Thread down through that stitch and then up through the stitch directly to its left. I'll show you a close up of how I'm working those stitches here. Continue in this pattern alternating between two stitches on top followed by two stitches in the bottom until the end of the row. As you're working, make sure not to pull the yarn too tightly. You're essentially creating a new row of knit stitches, so you want the tension to match the stitches above and below the grafting row. Here you'll see the row of grafted stitches starting to come together between the scrap yarns. Continue grafting until the end of the row. When you reach the side of the work, flip the piece inside out. 
My piece is now inside out and I'm now ready to finish grafting this side of the piece, working in the exact same process as the other side, alternating between two stitches on the top followed by two stitches on the bottom. Here I'm about three quarters the way through grafting. When you reach the last stitch, make sure to thread through every last stitch and then secure the yarn with one quick knot. We'll finalize the knot later, so just one temporary knot is great. Step three is removing the scrap yarn. Next, we need to remove the scrap yarn by unwinding the yarn around and around the work. If it helps, you can roll the yarn into a little ball as you work, or you can cut the yarn every now and then to shorten the tail as you unwind. One side will pull off fairly easily. For the other side, you'll need to identify the top length of yarn running through the top layer of scrap yarn stitches. Remove this yarn a few stitches at a time for the entire first row. After that length is removed, the scrap yarn should pull off much more easily. I just finished removing the scrap yarn from my work. There may be a small hole at the end. If this is the case, thread the yarn onto a darning needle and stitch it up and secure the yarn with a knot. Next, identify the line of grafted stitches and turn the work so that line is on the side of the bag. If the area where you started and ended the grafting has a little bump, you can turn the work inside out so that the bump is on the inside of the bag. The side of our bag is now grafted. Step four is seaming the bottom of the bag. Thread one of the long yarn tails onto a darning needle. We'll be using the mattress stitch to seam the bottom of the bag. To use the mattress stitch, first look at the two pieces you'll be seaming. Identify two lines of V-shaped stitches on either side, both running in the same direction. When working in the mattress stitch, you'll work through the interior bars to the side of these two rows. Begin by threading through one interior bar on the bottom side, as shown here. Pull the yarn through, and then thread through one interior bar on the other side, and pull the yarn through. Continue in this pattern, alternating between one interior bar on one side, followed by one interior bar on the other side, until the end of the seam. Unlike when we grafted earlier, you can pull the yarn fairly tightly as you work, as it will create a cleaner seam. You'll see after a few stitches that you'll be pulling together the two sides into a fairly seamless join. Continue until the end of the row. When you reach the end, make sure to capture all the last couple of stitches, and then thread the needle into the inside corner of the bag. Turn the bag inside out and secure the yarn with a few good knots. Then thread the tail into the center of the work to trim and hide the ends. The bag is made of a two-layer piece of knitting, so you just need to hide the yarn in between the two layers. Our bag is almost complete. Step five is adding a knitting tag. This part is optional, but if you'd like to add one, attach a knitting tag to the top of your phone bag. Step six is knitting the handles. For this project, I'm using the Tulip iCord Knitter Machine, but there are a number of iCord machines on the market that you can use, or you can hand knit or crochet the handle. To use the iCord Maker, thread the yarn up through the loop on the left, over the indent on the top left side of the machine, and down through the center of the machine. Next, add the weight to the bottom of the yarn tail. Hold the machine with your left hand, with the yarn running through a finger or two to provide tension to the yarn, with the weight pulling down. You can either hold the machine in the air or place it onto a table. Work very slowly at first. Turn the knob and allow the first hook to capture the yarn. Then turn the knob and before the second hook captures the yarn, use a crochet hook or your fingers to move the yarn behind the second needle. Turn the knob again and allow the third hook to capture the yarn. Then turn the knob again and before the fourth needle captures the yarn, use a crochet hook or your fingers to move the yarn behind the fourth needle. Your cast on row is complete. For the next row and all remaining rows, simply turn the knob over and over and allow all four hooks to capture the yarn for every row. As you work, you'll notice the I-cord will begin to emerge from the bottom of the machine. Continue knitting until your I-cord reaches at least 42 inches long. When knitting an I-cord, I always knit a little longer than I need for my pattern because it's very easy to remove stitches from the I-cord before binding off. I'm measuring my I-cord and I see that it's longer than the 42 inches we need for the handle, so it's time to cast off the machine. To cast off, simply cut a yarn tail in the working yarn, rotate the knob backwards for a few stitches, and then forwards for a few stitches, and then the stitches will pop off the needles. Pull the I-cord out through the bottom of the machine. Before measuring the I-cord, I like to stretch it out a few times to get the most accurate measurement. Identify where 42 inches is located on your cord. Pinch the I-cord at 42 inches, and then use the yarn tail to gently pull the stitches out until you reach your fingers. Before I bind off the stitches, I'm going to firm up the cast-on end. The cast-on end is already secured with a knot, but the stitches can sometimes look a little messy. I'll clean up the end by threading the yarn onto a darning needle and threading through a few stitches to pull them together, and then securing that yarn with another good knot. Next, we'll bind off the stitches on the other side. You'll see that the cast-off edge of the I-cord will have four live stitches. Thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle and thread through all four stitches, making sure to work gently so you don't pull off any of the stitches while you work. Pull the yarn through tightly and secure the yarn with a couple of good knots. The I-cord handle is now finished and ready to attach to the bag. 
Step 7 is attaching the handle to the bag. Thread one of the yarn tails onto a darning needle and thread through three interior bars on one side of the bag. Then thread back through the I-cord. On the next round, thread through five interior bars on the same side of the bag and then again through the I-cord. Continue stitching a few stitches around the I-cord and the side of the bag to ensure a really strong join. Then secure the yarn with a couple of good knots and weave the yarn into the center of the work and trim the yarn to pull it into the center. Before you attach the other side, gently untwist the I-cord if need be. Repeat the same process on the other side of the bag, making sure to create a really strong join between the handle and the bag. Weave in and trim the yarn tail. If you have any remaining yarn tails, weave them into the center of the work. Your crossbody foam bag is complete. If you enjoyed this pattern, you can order the full book of my knitting machine patterns, which is available now on Amazon. Or you can find the link at dianalevinenits.com. If you make this project, please tag me at dianalevinenits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. And if you liked this video, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest videos.